Talking Prep Beat. It's Thomas Lawrence and TJ Holmes. So we're here to talk about Prep Football Game of the Week, the Valley Bowl, CV at West Valley. You know, Thomas, these are two teams with, you know, polar opposite records, basically. CV at 1-4, and four, West Valley at 5-0. and oh. But you kind of have to throw those records out in this rivalry game that they have every year. You know, CV is coming in, you know, with two weeks off to prepare for West Valley. You know, they want to upset. They want to get this win. West Valley, though, is rolling right now. They are and rolling as much as anybody for West Valley. is junior Austin Clark. You know, five touchdowns last week alone, 11 on the year. He does it all for them. He's a ball hawk on defense. He's really the spirit of that team. And, you know, one thing I know that CV coach Matt Hunsaker was telling you about this week's game is that Central Valley is going to have to, one, play a fantastic game to win this week. And number two, they're probably going to need a little help from West Valley. But West Valley hasn't really done that for anybody this year. No, I mean, they, they really haven't turned the ball over. And that's a sign of a really good team is you take care of the ball and you protect it. And West Valley really hasn't done that at all, turned the ball over. Looking at the other side of the ball, on the defensive side for West Valley, that 3-5 defense, you know, they're, they're going up against... You know, a CV team that runs a wing T. West Valley really hasn't seen that wing T yet this year. You know, and they kind of run their own version of a little shotgun out of it as well, too. You know, what I like in this game is CV has decided to go with Tim Naylor, the junior quarterback, you know, as a signal caller in this one, moving Cody Connor, the former quarterback, to halfback and wingback, give them an extra threat in the backfield. CV running that wing T out of D2 and D1, pretty much the signature team that runs that in the section is Paradise. Two-time defending champion, Division One, and, you know, TG, they're hosting Enterprise this week, playing them for the first time since uh, an infamous 2009 section title game. But besides the rivalry, besides both of these kids wanting to win, there is a ton at stake, not just for these teams, but for the entire section this week. Yeah, I mean, you look at the Division One rankings that came out earlier this week on Wednesday, you get the Paradise number one team, Enterprise moving up to number two. So this is a number one versus number two matchup, huge matchup. Paradise had that last week against Foothill when they were number two took care of the Cougars. Now they get Enterprise at home the same, you know, the week after Foothill. So this is a really big game for both these teams to really get that, you know, that early edge on, you know, that number one seed and the elite and towards the league championship because the winner of this is still going to be undefeated in the league. You know, so there's going to be a lot of emotions, a lot of expectations because of how big this game really is. Yeah, and for Division One, this game is pretty much the rest of the section's best chance, not the last chance, but the best chance to get a loss on Paradise's record and throw some, some, some other teams into the mix for maybe having home field advantage. Paradise, the further the season goes on at Omaray Field, the tougher they are to beat. And the last time they lost to the playoffs at home was to Enterprise in that 9 game, so it's been a while. Yeah, you know, there's and other games in the AL this, you know, this week is, you know, Foothills hosting PV, you know, out in Palo Cedro. Foothill throttled, you know, PV 42-0 last week. PV got handed to him last week at West Valley. You know, 42 to 7. So, you know, and one thing that Foothills really got going from other than that, their offense and, you know, all the other playmakers and everything have is, is that under Brian Hamilton, they really take care of business coming off a loss. Yeah. And over in West Reading, Shasta hosts last in a non league matchup. And for Shasta, a good chance to put together a two game winning streak and kind of really get their season rolling, the best it's been so far. And they're up against the last team that's been tough in years past, but a bit depleted. So, especially with Avery Holly in tow, it should be a good league for the Wolves. Yeah. And then rounding up the rest of the EAL, you know, Red Bluff's going to Chico. Both teams still in search of their first league win right now and this really could be a shootout because both teams can put up points as we've already seen yet this year yeah. and you know that's going to do it for the for the prep football uh, previews this week you know check out preppy.com for you know scores highlights scoreboard um, everything you got blogs and tweets